Well, I was saying that um, I don't feel like I could make an abstract painting like pure abstraction. Um, at I mean, definitely not as good as Thomas Noskowski, and so that I don't feel like I could contribute in that way because I just never felt like I could do one. Like it was always something foreign to me. But this, I feel like I can do this, or um, I can add to it in some way. Right, and I think uh, because of the fact that you keep the detail to a minimum, um, it, it makes sense with what you'd said earlier that you really don't want people to lock in on a cultural moment or some horrifying aspect of something or a particular subject matter like Bigfoot or something. That to make it more accessible, more broadly open to more people, minimizing the, re the detail but yet having some aspect that people can relate to, nature, you know, p people, um, but yet, you know, it's not always clear if they're, you know, gender specifically or what they're doing, do they know each other or whatever. It's just what you capture is this uh, people in nature and just sort of the, the, the sort of pleasantry and the tenderness and just the innocence of like nature and just people sort of in nature surrounded by animals, whether they're having a romance or skinny dipping or just taking a walk or just observing cows. So I think that's kind of the, the beauty of it. But inherently, though, that is an abstraction. You, you didn't see those two guys in that setting. I mean, you might pick up on a setting that you saw from a photograph you took or whatever, or a place you frequent quite a bit. But it seems like the, the rest of it's pretty fictive and out of your imagination and sort of, you know. It, it, well, they come from sources that I, the bather paintings um, almost all come from found imagery, usually online, like uh, like old pinup photos like these from sunbathing magazines or something like right. that. Right. So, and so I'm looking for something very specific or they're coming from, um, for instance, the, the one bather painting that's some, that is like bather after Poisson. So it would be, sometimes they come from figures within right. a painting that I'm interested in. And I liked the way they, uh, there was something about their composition and I wanted to use them in that right. way. Sometimes I, I credit it if I feel it's important right. or I don't. Um, but it's really, the bather paintings are really coming from that tradition of bather paintings. Like I remember the first time I saw in Philadelphia Cezanne's, the big bather painting they have of Cezanne's bathers. And just, uh, it was one of, the, I was 17 and it just, uh, it just made me really think about painting differently. Right. The scale was a big part of it, but then, you know, they, they also had some small ones and I've seen the smaller examples, but there was something about the way he painted that, the composition of the figures. And so ever since then, it was like bather paintings are really interesting to me. And the way he's doing it's really interesting to me compared to maybe the way it was done Right. Like if you look at uh, academy painting, 19th century French academy painting, bather paintings are awful, you know? They're just like, they are more about this kind of sentimentality that is directing you how to look at them, you know, and why they, they're made for a certain kind mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, nostalgia or like pleasure. Right. Um, but then Cezanne wasn't like that. There was, he was interested in, it, it wasn't, didn't matter, they were bathers, but it didn't matter, you know. There mm -hmm. was something else he was interested in there as well. And that's kind of where I f feel I'm interested in that tradition. But then as I developed the motifs, um, I felt that it's much more interesting to me that there are only two bathers and then, but stay within the same gender because obviously they were bathing to bathe themselves, you know, they mm -hmm. clean themselves and so they weren't going to be, at least not in France or in Europe, a mixed, mm -hmm. you know. But even in the, the Asian, uh, classical Asian paintings that have bathers, the Japanese ones, it's usually women together, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I don't recall ever seeing any done with men bathing, uh, at least uh, completely naked, but I remember, like, so it's like, it seems to be like bather paintings. And then I wanted to keep that, but I knew that the, in a contemporary setting that, that that might open up other, um, other 
a viewer, a, a, the way the viewer will approach it. Um, because it's like, we don't bathe. We have indoor bathrooms now, so we're not right. bathing outside. So if, it's, if you have bathers outside today, and they're not having clothes on, they're not there because they're washing themselves in a group of same sex. Right. You know? um, and that was interesting. That, just that is interesting to me to how to approach it here. And then not having big groups of them having it too, I felt like if you had a big group of them, then it just ties too much into like aping that kind of tradition of bathers from particularly Cezanne or like Renoir or any of the, you know, especially in the 19th century where you had large groups of bathers in a stream. Right. And I didn't want to do that. And um, so that's how I think about them. And I've been basically, it's either one or two. But you're right to, to I think, another part of that is like expanding that field so that these bathers are, are in natural settings. And so you can, especially in a show designed this way, say, well, that's what they're looking at where they're near, that's the, the right. environment they're in. They're, right. They might be a pasture of cows near the stream that they're bathing in or lake or whatever that mm -hmm. they're bathing in, or they might get lucky and see a bear go by because where I live, that happens <laughs> on these sofas. <laughs> um, so, those, the, so that started becoming more, um, those tie-ins became, are interesting for me as far as in, the installation of it. But then the next time I do a, a full show, I might not, that might not be how it would be designed, right. but it's, it's, it's it, as you're saying, it adds to that experience for the viewer and it hopefully makes it a more contemplative experience, absorptive, so that they can, and then they'll, and that will can open up the different kinds of things, they, narratives that they might right. want, if, they, if that's where they go with it. Right. You know. But if they go with it purely on a formal set, so just the color, and then that's fine too. Right, and my point was is that it's, it is an abstraction because you, you, you didn't see this and so it's, you know, it, it's inherently abstract and then the fact that you also, um, you know, remove a lot of detail and it just, it, it just opens up the options. Well, some I do see like that one of the, that paint, that landscape, that is like a view of the Esopus where I live. Kinda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I do sometimes work from life in that way. Like some, some, some of the paintings do come from drawings that right. are actually, like some bather paint, they're not in, in the show, but are my wife in the Esopus River and I'm just a narrow sketchbook and she's in the river and I like the way, you know, that, that looked, you know, so I'll, I'll draw that or I'll like something about a, a view of the Esopus mm -hmm. or as trees. So sometimes they actually do come, um, there's nothing in, except for that, I think, in the mm -hmm. show that comes from observation. Right. Um, but I approach it the same way yeah. as and if again, it came I think from, it's just because you're coming from like an experience and creating an experience of the, uh, the, how people read the composition. And, um, but beyond that, a lot of it's sort of up to the viewer and where they kind of go with it. And which I think is kind of nice, and that's what what appeals to me. Um, you know, it's not too prescriptive. You know, it, you you get the essence and the nuance, but um, beyond that, it's really well. Actually, there's the essence, but the, the nuance comes really, I think, from the viewer. You know, in terms of how they interpret it from their own sort of experience, which is, I think, makes them, I think, to me, more more interesting, um, as opposed to you know, um, a literal depiction you know, of something, you know, a photo reel sort of uh, painting. Um, but having said that, we won't go off into another tangent, but there are ways of even abstracting that <laughs> in a very interesting way. So I think we make too much distinction between abstraction and realism, I mean, between abstraction and figuration. Um, they, they coexist in a lot. I mean, just yeah. even in our own lives daily, you know, we're, we're always with something that's very figurative next to something that's very abstract. But so, even within representational painting that is uh, working as a representational painting, the, the construction of that painting, it's abstract elements. I mean, this is yes. malleable. The material, for one, is just malleable material that has nothing. Right. And through, you know, uh, even representational painters will have, 
use abstract principles to um, to design further designs their compositions. Sure. So it's and I don't even think anymore that like I mean it used to be like in the '60s you were a rep either a representational. Right. That's what I'm saying. Is I think there's now any it's more. Like there's so really just there's not really a hard and fast rule because there's an awful lot of people who do kind of mix it up. But even just intellectually. It, it, you know, I think it's there's it's not a clean line. Mm -hmm. It's not as black and white as I think people like to think it is. You know, when they're searching for something, oh, figurative or abstract. You know, it's um, so it, it depends on I think more around the uh, other aspects of it. And I think it's what you kind of capture is is more of an experience versus a specific subject matter. You know, and so I think that's what I I, I like about the paintings. I think that's why I think they they really have a um, I think a, a lot of points of entry for a lot of people, and, and um, so I, I hope people see the show. Uh, there's uh, all of it's online at davidrichardgallery.com, and um, and I thank you for for doing this. I mean, it's a big exhibition. There's a lot of work. I think there's like 30 pieces in it, but they're really very fun. And I think we, you and I, worked on sort of the layout. And I, I like the fact that we tried to make it sort of salon and narrative. So I appreciate it and. Um, and thanks everybody who's watching. And as I said earlier, like the video. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we'll see you the next time.